Hello and welcome to another episode of Full Card Finance here at Zacks. I'm your host, Ben Rains. And today we're taking a look at two cheap artificial intelligence stocks to consider buying now and holding for the long haul. And those two stocks are Celestica, which trades on the ticker CLS in Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. TSM is the ticker, though it's often referred to as just T, TSMC or Taiwan Semi. And I also want to note that when I say cheap, I don't mean price tag. These are not $10 stocks. I mean in terms of valuation. But before we get into everything else uh, and dive into these two stocks, I do want to remember to uh, tell everybody to remember to subscribe and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcast and make sure to check out our zax.com slash promo page for a look in some of our services, portfolios, and more. So before we jump into these two cheap AI stocks, I want to quickly go over where the market stands at the moment. I'm recording this midday on Thursday, so the big news midweek was Jay Powell and the Fed holding steady, which was what Wall Street was expecting, and the positive reaction to his speech and the dot plot was that the Fed still expects to cut rates by 25 basis points twice in the second half of 2025. And on the recession front, Powell uh, remained pretty optimistic about the economy, even though there's still obviously all the unknowns about the tariff uh, tariff wars going on at the moment. So that's kind of the noise that everyone's trying to block out. But as long as the interest rate picture is going to trend in the right direction with the Fed set to cut rates in the back half of the year, that's what Wall Street wanted to hear, and that the recession outlook remains relatively uh, modest, that we we could have the economy continue to kind of hum along here in the back half of the year. So the bulls reacted pretty positively on Wednesday afternoon. The market is trying to find a direction as we record this. Uh, the bulls will need to hold the, that uh, their ground here at the moment to try to fight their way back above the 200 day and the 50 week or risk maybe giving up some of this momentum. That said, though, overall, the big backbones of the market, interest rates and earnings growth expectations remain bullish. So if we look at the overall earnings outlook for S&P 500 earnings, the uh they're expected to jump 6.1% in the first quarter of 2025, 10% over 10% in the second quarter, roughly 10% in Q3, and then nearly 12% in Q4. So if we look on an annual basis, we're calling, this is most recent Zach's data, calling for 9.5% earnings growth for the S&P 500 in 2025, and then 137 growth in 2026, and then 13% growth in 2027. And this would come against 10.9% growth in 2024. So really impressive earnings growth, which is driving the market. Uh, and then we should also note that NVIDIA's big conference earlier this week highlighted that the AI spending boom appears to remain on track. So all that's overall bullish for the long haul. We might see more selling and more profit taking in the near term amid all of the uncertainty. But we do have to remember we're now coming up against five-year lows off the COVID lows. So a lot of these stocks are up thousand like multiple thousand percents of the if we look the nasdaq's up roughly 70 67 percent off those covid lows uh or excuse me the nasdaq's up almost 100 percent off those covid lows the s p 500's up almost 70 percent off those covid lows and amid all of that if you stayed exposed to the market that whole time we've gone through uh excuse me i'm, I'm not even talking about the covid lows if you look back at the beginning of 2020 so including the COVID sell-off, that bear market, and the 2022 bear market, the S&P 500 is up roughly 70%, and the NASDAQ's up roughly 95%. So that's why, amid all this uncertainty, maybe people are trying to think about getting onto the sidelines. But if it's proven, if you're a long-term investor buying into these pullbacks and drawdowns and even uh, massive corrections and buying into bear markets is uh, – a good strategy for these strong stocks. So with this in mind, we're going to take a look at two of these AI stocks that could be long-term winners for possibly decades to come that their valuation looks really impressive and their growth outlooks are also really impressive. And the first of those two stocks is Celestica, which as I said up top, trades in the ticker CLS. It's a relative, relatively under the radar picks and shovels technology stock providing investors exposure to Growth across artificial intelligence, the energy transition, and beyond. The stock has crushed NVIDIA over the last several years and the last 12 months. 
yet it's trading roughly 30% below its all-time highs amid the recent broader market sell-off and the, the wider AI sell-off. So it's a electronics manufacturing services standout. It specializes in designing, engineering, and manufacturing products for companies across various critical areas, including global megatrends like AI data centers to energy, uh, the energy industry expansion and transition. Its expertise across data centers, semiconductor equipment, and energy generation and storage are some of its most critical growth areas. It's also benefiting from the long-term upside across aerospace and defense, telecom, healthcare tech, supply chain solutions, and beyond. If we look at its growth picture, uh, if we go back, it went public back in the late 1990s, though, it's supercharged its growth over the last several years, given its ability to support these key growth industries that I mentioned up top. So it averaged roughly 20% revenue growth between 2022 and 2024 to soar from about $5.6 billion in 2021 to $9.6 billion in 2024. It also uh, averaged 65% earnings growth uh, during that stretch on a gap basis. And then most recently, it grew its 2024 revenue by 21%, and it grew its gap earnings by 68% of its non or its adjusted earnings by 58%. So massive growth on the bottom line as well to go along with this impressive revenue growth. The company provided really solid guidance when it reported in late January, and it continues to see momentum this year and into 2026. Its CEO said at the time that the current demand environment for data center hardware is robust, as evidenced by recent customer forecasts, as uh, well as new AI program rewards over the last 90 days. It highlighted a big uh, 1.6 terabyte switching program that it landed with its second hyperscaler customer, supporting the customer with the design and production of fully AI-optimized networking racks. Just for reference, hyperscalers include those companies such as Meta, Amazon, Microsoft. So think of all the companies who are investing heavily in AI data centers. It's working with uh, at least two of those clients at the moment, so that's a positive sign. It also secured an award for a new hardware platform solutions program with a leading digital native company to deliver full rack AI optimization systems solutions. Uh, it's projected to grow its revenue by 12% in 2025, so a little bit of a slowdown, but then another 18% in 2026 to get up to nearly $13 billion in revenue. And it's expected to uh, grow its adjusted earnings by 23% both this year and next year. And its upbeat earnings revisions help it land a Zach's rank number one strong buy at the moment. And if we look at its most accurate estimate for 2026, it's already coming in 9% above its beefed up consensus. So that's a really great sign that its earnings revisions continue to trend upward even as its stock declines. So the stock has soared over 3,000% in the last five years. I I kind of alluded to that's off the COVID lows, crushing the Zach tech sector, which is up 175% during that stretch. And it's highly ranked electronics manufacturing services industry, which is up 520%. And it's blown away NVIDIA, which is up roughly 2,100%. Most recently, it's up about 700% in the past three years to nearly double uh, NVIDIA. Though the recent growth in AI sell-off has it trading 30% below its highs and 50% below its average Zach's price target. As I record this, the stock is up around 5%. It's trying to take it, retake its 21-day moving average after finding some support right by its 200-day moving average and roughly near its post-Trump uh, election when everything kind of everything in the tech sector and AI went nuts. It's finding support right by the 200 day, which was also near the the post uh, Trump election gap up. And it went from heavily over bought RSI levels to it's some of its lowest over the last year and now trading at roughly neutral on, on that front. It's also worth noting that investors don't have to pay up for its growth outlook and Outperformance over the last several years, the stock is trading at an 18% discount to the Zach's tech sector at 19.9 times four 12 month earnings. It's also trading 45% below its 10 year highs. And if we look at terms of forward sales, it's trading at 0.9 times four 12 month sales, sales, which is a 80% discount to the tech sector, which is trading at 6.3 times four 12 month sales. So Celestica is certainly an AI stock that offers great value for investors and 
Uh, it's trading 30% below its highs and 50% below its SACs price target. So certainly worth putting on your radar, even if there's some more near-term volatility. And if it go down a little, goes down a little bit further, possibly just buy some more since it seems like a strong stock ready to outperform for possibly years to come. Taiwan Semi is also addressing wisely and prudently its geopolitical fears by expanding its manufacturing footprint outside of Taiwan into Japan and most recently into the U.S. There's heavy investment in the U.S. in places such as Arizona. It also is worth noting uh, it's been a stellar business for a long time, really well run, really well run company, strong balance sheet. It pays a dividend. If you look at its growth, its projected growth revenue by 26% in 2025 and another 20% in 2026 to go from about 90 billion last year to 136 billion in 2026. And on the earnings front, its adjusted earnings are expected to climb 30% in 2025 and another 26% or excuse me, 20% next year. And if we look at its uh, earnings revision since its mid-January report, they're all trending in the right direction, which is a positive sign that despite some of these AI sell-offs and the broader tech sell-off, the earnings picture continues to remain solid. So that's a, a good time to buy into these dips after these stocks simply just grew overheated. Uh, Taiwan Semi shares have tripled the Zach's tech sector over the last 20 years. And they're also up about 90% over the last two years. And the recent sell-off across the AI and most of the market has Taiwan Semi trading 40% below its average Zach's price target and around 20% below its actual highs. TSM might be trying to find some support near its 50-week moving average. Uh, it's, it's currently trading like right around those levels. And it's... Like the market is trying to get back above the 200-day and that 50-week are kind of these longer-term moving averages that the NASDAQ and a lot of these stocks that have had a big pullback are trying to return above. Its recent slide, though, coupled with its impressive earnings outlook, has it trading at a 45% discount to its highs uh, at 18.2 times forward 12-month earnings. It's also trading at a 23% discount to tech despite its long-term and more near-term outperformance. And if we look over the last 10 years, it's trading almost directly in line with its 10-year median, even though the stock's been on a stellar run and it's trading only 20% below its all-time high. So Taiwan Semi is another one of these value-focused, growth-focused AI stocks that you could consider buying and holding for the next decade plus. So that does it for this episode of Full Court Finance. Until next time, I'm your host, Ben Rains. And remember, if you have any questions, please feel free to shoot us an email over at podcast at zax.com. This material is being provided for informational purposes only, and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice, or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create, and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identified described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's investment research as a whole.